one of the things they did that was really unique that other dance music artists, especially in today's world with the accessibility of the internet, um, most dance artists are so impatient the second they start making beats or think they have the best song possibly, just put it out online. And one of the things Corella really did was for three years they developed their sound. Mm -hmm. And they kept trying or thinking about putting something out, but they never let it get to the point where it actually was released. And so when I actually got to the point where I finally started managing them, um, that was at a point where it was really perfect, not only timing, but that their sound was developed. They had taken the necessary time to learn what it meant to be an artist, which obviously is much more than just making music anymore. And I think that they were really ready for it. Um, and so we, our business relationship started though. Um, I was kind of learning as an artist. I always knew I wasn't going to be the best writer or the best singer or rapper for that matter, or, you know, look the best obviously, or any of any of those. So um, I determined to become the best online marketer. And I started to do some marketing for them very early on before they had any success. And in exchange, they would write and produce my material. Okay. And so that was where our business relationship started. And then um, I was doing something else in New York. And then when I had moved back home to Chicago, um, there just seemed like there was an opportunity to really take things to the next level. And we got very lucky because as we chose to all partner together, it happened just <laughs> insanely quick. And hasn't really stopped. I feel like really blessed every day because I didn't yeah. think, I thought we'd still be at the point now where some of the things that happened last year this time would just be happening to us. We kind of prepared for the worst and um, I guess just hard work really paid off. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I remember meeting you probably a little over a year ago and you guys were driving out here in a van that you rented <laughs> playing like the 3 a.m. slot, you know. Staying at, at the Comfort Inn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And now you guys are flying all over the world and playing massive festivals. So um, that's, you know, that's and that happened in a very, very short amount of time. So that's what I'd like to learn a little bit about is what were, what were some of the key moments of success along the way and some of the strategies along the way over this last year, year and a half that has um, just propelled Cruella's career to, to such a high level. Um, so, yeah, I guess, I mean, if you, if you want to... Yeah, you got to, I mean, the, the, you have to give a lot of credit to the act. I mean, it's, it's definitely a team game. Um, the vision oftentimes comes from the act and then it's management's job to execute that and you obviously need both components and you also need all the other things that you know we've like a 35 to 40 person team with them at this point it's pretty extensive and at, you know i'm basically at the top of all that guiding all those people and working with the group to make sure that the group's needs are met but the thing that was so unique about them which is what i look for in new acts that i'm either developing or taking on as management is that there's a vision that's so long term. It's like a five to 10 year plan, mm -hmm. which in dance music, it's so easy to um, think almost cookie cutter, like what, what remix should we do? What label should this song come out on? How can this song be more relevant? But it's not like, that's just one piece yeah. of such a larger puzzle. And most artists, when I begin to have the conversation with them, um, oftentimes not even assessing the potential of a business relationship, but just as almost an advisor, just helping them you know, with a simple phone call you realize that that vision's not there. And for Corella, it was. It was to the point where when we, we released Killing It last February, um, which was kind of our first breakout online single, we noticed very early on that when record labels would call us and they'd say, how come the girls aren't singing live? If the girls can sing live, why do you have them DJing? And we knew exactly what to say because we'd already thought of any question they could possibly ask. And the answer was that, you know, we wanted to embed them in DJ culture. They wanted to be DJs. We knew that dance music was what was in and cool and they want, that's what they wanted and aspired to be. And we also knew that eventually we would be the one act that would take vocalists, give vocalists a name in the genre and be able to create some somewhat of a credible vocalist that would eventually become the hybrid set of DJing and performing live. But we didn't just know that we were going to do it, Nick. We actually knew that at Ultra Music Festival 2013, this was back in February 2012, so over a year away, yeah. that that would be the first time we debuted live vocals. And we also knew that the fall tour of 2013, as I just told you outside, would be the first time we broadcast going live and really doing... Um, a full live, or not not full live, because the girls are always going to be DJs, but a, a hybrid set that has full stage production, similar to some what other some big bass acts have done. And that vision, I guess, to be that act, it was just always present. And we could, I could go further down the line. I could, I know where I want them to be yeah. five years from now. I know where I want them to be ten years from now. And when the vision's that deep, um, then you can make and you and you believe in the act or yourself if you're managing yourself that much then you don't never have to make decisions based on financial needs 
or any other need other than longevity. And we've made every decision based on longevity, and I think that's really paid off for them because we've never sacrificed the art or the brand to um, do anything that we didn't think was going to increase their chance of having longevity, which most acts in this lane I don't think are going to have. Mm-hmm. So you guys really drew a blueprint. You had this vision of this mansion that you wanted to build, and you sat down and you you, you came up with every single you know piece along the way, every um, every strategic. Uh, move so. and it wasn't it wasn't just that they were like females and a male and it was a unique makeup I'm doing it now with um, a, f- a couple different acts where like there's a male solo act and there's things that are so unique that we're doing that like when you look at Dead Mouse, like he's done some really unique things and I think even Skrillex has done some really unique stuff it's been part of a much bigger picture you even see the way he's building Ausla it's been part of you know he had this I'm sure in his mind for years yeah. or even as the decisions came up it was all based on longevity of what could be um, successful for several years, not just today, and um, I, that's how you know our company. We always want to go into it and, and create. You know, our company's called Third Brain, and we aspire to come together with our clients to sort of create something that's bigger than ourselves. The slogan is one plus one equals three, and I think that with acts, especially young ones, sometimes it's hard for them to get on that that page. But we try so early on to get them in the mindset that the art is everything, your career is everything. And if you don't want to, I mean, Corella, a good example, you mentioned flying across the country. I mean, we had to, we were in Miami, we had to drive to Orlando in the morning, do a shoot with ESPN, take a private jet and go on it, live at four in the morning. And a lot of acts wouldn't have had the stamina to do that when they were out the night before, you know, politicking with Nikki Romero and Avicii and whoever else they were hanging out with. It's like a lot of acts, they want to go and get drunk or, you know, mess around with members of the opposite sex or whatever they want to do. And, um... Couldn't say that more awkwardly. <laughs> um, but, you know, this, but a lot of acts have different visions for what is supposed to be being an artist. And mm-hmm. if you don't take advantage of this window when everybody's watching you, when you're Corella and the whole world is watching to see what you're going to do next and how you're going to break a barrier or do something different, you may miss your window of opportunity to become one of the biggest acts in the world. And so as management, it's just our job to... Um, do the best we can to keep them on that path, but at the end of the day, it's on them. I can't, yeah. I can't do some of the things that they need to do. So, yeah. um, and we've been blessed and lucky that they do work hard and that they were ready for that because I've seen a lot of acts where they haven't been. What would you say is is one of Cruella's greatest characteristics that makes them successful as as a group, as a as a band? Um, I think that they know what they want. A lot of times and that can make things difficult because it's sometimes especially when you deal with art it's difficult to execute art in a way especially when there's like three people in the group where everybody's vision is felt and met Mm -hmm. but they know what they want they're good at trusting their team Um, they they work hard Um, they're creative and we have three and if you want to take it I mean they we oftentimes call it five really creative minds um, who will do anything for the group and you know, a lawyer or a business manager, an agent, it's important to pick all of those right people at the same time, but those people don't wake up every morning determined to prove themselves on behalf of their client or determined to make their group the next worldwide phenomenon. And I can assure you that I wake up every morning thinking, how can I go about doing that? And and I'm proactive about it, which is different than a lot of other managers. I mean, I'm not going to wait for brands to come to, uh, to us. I'm going to go pitch brands. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not going to wait to do for you know an artist to ask us to collaborate. I'm just going to ask. And then you notice that when you put those energies into the world, they kind of come back tenfold. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that one of the things, too, with young artists, it's really important that they show gratitude to their team, uh, which we've, as a team, really, I think, been genuine about doing and whether it's writing thank you notes to promoters or there's been countless situations where I'll write a thank you note or make a thank you call and then some bigger opportunity is three times bigger than the first one we got came in and did it happen because of that or not? I'm not like some really religious or spiritual person but I do believe in karma and I do believe that when you work hard, great things happen.